Hey, it's me, Naoto. I am Nathan. Today we are going to talk about best five plus three knives of the 2023. That's inflation, folks. That's right. We couldn't uh, do just five knives because we had too much cool stuff happen this year. Uh, so we have eight. Um, and one of them's not even a kitchen knife. Sue us. It's been a really great year for the world of Japanese knives and, and for us at Knifeware. Mm -hmm. um, we, we went to Japan a couple of times and, and we've got a lot of really cool, exciting lines, a lot of new makers that we're working with. You know, for us personally, uh, we hit 20 and 30,000 subscribers on YouTube this year. Oh. Um, had some great videos come out. We got to go to Terroir. Um, but we've seen so many cool knives this year. Uh, so many, yeah, like I said, new lines, new makers, uh, unusual shapes. It's, it's been really fun. So, oh, it. let's get into it. Yeah. Number eight. Glaston K-Series Guto 210 millimeters. Yeah, we just got this line in this year, right? Yeah. The, not, not a new knife, but new to us. Yeah, the, uh, this knife has been super, super popular mm. in Japan, especially among professional chefs in Japan. Right, and it looks like a professional chef's knife. Mm -hmm. Like, it has that kind of look to it. It's pretty robust. It's, you know, really sharp but not too thin not too fragile mm -hmm. uh, and the steel isn't too fragile either right no it is pretty robust it's it's not mm. like you know thin that, yeah as you said mm. it's not really really delicate but it is very very well made and their signature dimpling it's fantastic we've actually tested it on the you know potatoes and stuff yeah it was like it worked so well didn't it yeah a lot of people but especially professionals find that when they're cutting fast food piles up on their blade so they invented these dimples to help food fall away now i was pretty skeptical when we first got mm -hmm. them but they're they're phenomenal like they really create an incredible food separation they got a couple other things that help with that too don't they as far as the construction of the knife goes absolutely so not only just the dimpling the way it's been sharpened mm -hmm. it's actually contribute to the food separation as well. It has a really nice, what, it, what they call it, the hamaguri grind too, mm -hmm. right? So it will have the really nice cutting edge as well as the little bit of a peeling kind of feel of the food separation. They have so many different shapes and sizes to will cater for a lot of people in yeah. especially the professional kitchens. Like we have the uh, very flexible, they call it sole knife, but mm -hmm. flexible slicing knives. Uh, they have very, interesting shape the offset mm -hmm. knife as well yeah the offset penny knives which mm -hmm. i think would be good for anybody that's got uh problems with their wrists or trouble gripping stuff mm -hmm. to get a little more leverage over their food mm -hmm. they've got uh, yeah a lot of like just general regular shapes like chef's knives and petties mm -hmm. but then they've got a whole bunch of specialty shapes that professionals like to use so i, I love that yeah number seven hado sakai sumi bunka 180 millimeters so this was actually the first knife i bought this year I have used a Santoku for years, but I saw this, I was taking a picture of it for Instagram and it was so pretty that I had to have one and I am in love. This has been my go-to knife since January this year. Um, it's, it's phenomenal, it's got a crazy workout. I've really built up a nice patina on mine. You know, that white carbon steel cuts like crazy, but it just changes so much. It's like a leather jacket or a good pair of boots. I, I really, really love it. What, uh, what can you tell me about Hado? Well, the, uh, this is the, uh, well, the blade is forged by uh, Yoshikazu Tanaka-san mm, and sharpened nice. by the, they call it resident sharpener, right? right yeah. Of the Hado Maruyama-san, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they actually build a really nice team around them right now. So they have uh, three people working in the workshop and sharpening up. What they do quite a bit different from the mm -hmm. a lot of sharpeners in that, that region, right? Because in that region, people get blades from blacksmith right then they sharpen them at the different workshops yeah and oftentimes it is um oftentimes the designs or the how it's sharpened it's determined by they call it wholesaler mm. like the brand yeah right? yeah sakai kikimori and stuff like yeah that. they're doing it on a contract basically they are more like a brand and the craftsman kind of put together mm. they could do the way that they think it works the best. Yeah, they're just making the knives they want to make. Exactly. Yeah. And also we put a little bit of inputs and stuff like that. Yeah, we've given right? them some feedback. I love how tall the bevel yeah. is on this. It yeah. it just glides so cleanly, especially mm -hmm. through anything that's a little bit dense, like a carrot or an onion or a potato. Yeah. Super smooth to cut with. The details they put on polishing, um, the spine of the knife up along there, and the choil where your finger goes. It's such a comfortable knife to hold. Absolutely. Yeah, even yeah. compared to like my Fujiwara Denka, this is probably the most comfortable knife I own. It, it's just really the little touch, right? The, yeah. Uh, 
so nicely polished. Mm -hmm. Often when they make the, they call it croce, you know, leaving the, this black finish yeah. off, they often just leave the uh, the spine black, or, mm -hmm. you know, as, yeah. as it's been forged. But yeah. they did, you know, take take it up and... Uh, so it's a really nice touch and their finish, fit and finish is really above and beyond. And I like, as somebody that likes carbon steel and likes to build a patina, mm. I like how much canvas here you have to work mm. for building that patina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got so many different colors and variations going on uh, on mine now and it's it's just such a gorgeous knife that just gets better with age. Number six, Masakage Yuki Santoku. This is a classic, isn't it? Yeah, this is the first knife I ever sold at Knife Wear. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Me too. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, this has been around for a long time and so sometimes we almost forget to talk about these mm -hmm. because there's just such a, a piece of, such an important piece of the tapestry mm -hmm. of Knife Wear that we, we, neglect them sometimes and so we want to give them the due diligence and and they've been working really hard because Masakai is such a popular brand and sells out so fast mm -hmm. they've been working really hard to up their production and, and really get on top of it. Absolutely that. right the uh, there was like one like couple years back that we had like probably none on the shelf for yeah. quite some times and yes they have been up in the game on a production so mm -hmm. that the, uh, they are actually getting more out yeah and without compromising on quality at all right absolutely it's even actually better the reason why the production's been up is that the those people who's um working for those mm -hmm. workshops and blacksmiths they are apprentices or workers they've been now at the point been working there for like five years right right so it's it's yeah because when <coughs> it's it's always a struggle right when you when you have the new hire mm -hmm. teach them how to do things and the quality it sometimes dips tiny bit it's not yeah or it's just hard maybe the quality is the same but the production has to suffer because they it takes them longer to make the same quality right, right. now those young guys have worked there for long enough mm -hmm. production's up quality is even better Awesome. And now we can actually talk about them. Yeah, we can actually we can get enough that we can tell people they exist without, yeah, without exactly, them just di exactly, disappearing. Right? Yeah. As Enru and, and Kato-san have kind of passed the reins onto onto you know the new heads, mm -hmm. uh, Ikeda-san and Kato-san, um, you know, and then they've got the next generation they're trading, right? Like there's always going to be a lag time, or like a little dip in production, mm -hmm. but it's nice that they're they're now up and firing on all cylinders and and making the best knives they've ever made. Yeah. But but we had to pick the Yuki Santoku because it's. Since day one, it's been one of our best sellers, one of our, one of our favorite knives, mm -hmm. and, and a, a customer favorite too. Yeah, absolutely. Number five, we have the Mutsumi Hinora Shirogami Kurochi Tsuchime Gyuto 210 millimeters. Now this is a new offering from uh, from Mutsumi Sun, right? Yeah, we, uh, we've been dealing with Mutsumi Sun for some time now, right? Mm -hmm. We, I've got his Nakiri mm -hmm. at one garage sale, and that was the first garage sale knives that I've ever picked Oh really? Up. And yeah, it's oh, nice. been, it is done a Kiri that I might go to in a Kiri. Nice. But yeah, he makes great stuff. We hadn't had his knife for quite a while. Then we started getting his knives back mm -hmm. as he's up in the production. He mm. started he started produce more. He's in charge of his so-called the Ajikataya brand mm -hmm. that the his dad and his uh, yeah, it's the family brand sort of. So exactly. that's been passed down to him now in, in exactly, a sense. Eh? Exactly. Okay. Cool. So uh, yeah, he's up in the game now. He wants to uh, try uh, making some something different too, mm. right? Yeah, like a lot of these guys, he's he's younger, right? Like he's still in his forties, which is like. I would imagine where a lot of these guys kind of start to hit their prime and really start like getting the quality, the the consistency, and the quantity kind of all at the same time, right? Absolutely. The uh, great thing about look a lot of um, like 2023 best knives mm -hmm. is that done by a lot of younger folks. Yeah, there's definitely a theme that I'm sensing here. Almost pretty much all of these are from <clears throat> from younger makers. Yeah. The yeah. Um, Kevin recently just went to visit uh, Hinora-san mm. and went out uh, for dinner with the Mutsumi-san. Oh, nice. And it seems like they had a very, very good time that's uh, awesome. talking about the future. Cool. So that, that's that's why this knife or uh, his knives deserves to be in the uh, you know top five yeah. plus alpha of the 2023. Well, I think that's a theme that we're really, we're really seeing here. Obviously not with every single knife here, but a lot of these, most of them are from people that are 
you know, somewhat new to the game, like new meaning like 10 years <laughs> and or five years, and, and are just now getting to that saturation point where like they're just kicking ass, people are starting to know their name, right? Like all of these are gaining that like recognition in other parts of the world where, you know, we're starting to see people come to us and asking for Mitsumi Sun's knives because enough people have now heard about them and told other people and, and they've got that popularity now, which is great to see because he makes quality knives. They're different from a lot of what you see people making these days, a lot of modern blacksmiths there I mean this guy's kind of thick and kind of heavy but in a good way like it's got a confidence to it it, it feels great it feels like a knife you yeah. know forging techniques sharpening techniques it's it, he's a top notch now yeah very consistent very yeah and, and no no fancy bells or whistles because I think he knows his skills great and he doesn't need to he, he's not playing any tricks he's just saying hey this is this is what I make yep you know? What I love to see is the uh, right now the engraving says Ajikata, his family mm, brand, mm -hmm. but I would like to see the his engraving Mutsumi Saku, like his yeah, father, yeah, like yeah. Kasa Saku. I'm looking forward to that. Number four, Yu Kurosaki, folding knife. Hey, not a kitchen knife this time. We're playing tricks on you folks, but seriously, uh, Kurosaki-san is a kitchen knife maker primarily, but he makes hunting knives and now folding knives too. Um, we've been carrying his stuff for about 12 years. He's yet another young-ish maker <coughs> who's really like at that point in his career where he's just killing it. And uh, and he loves to get creative and, and make new stuff. Absolutely right. right? Like look at his uh, regular kitchen knives with the uh, lots of unique mm. hammer patterns, right? Like yeah, he can do a lot more because mm. he has like he's developed again his team, right? Right. Like the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Two younger, I think, apprentices, maybe another. Um, I don't know how many actually he has right mm -hmm. now. His dad is helping him as well. Awesome. So it's like whole family. That's right? really cool. Yeah. yeah. No wonder that he actually gets into the. Like this pocket knife. Yeah, well, and he's such a pioneer. Like he, he's constantly using new steels, like VG XEOS, which was just launched this year. Mm -hmm. um, he's using, yeah, new new handle materials, new finishes, all that kind, of new shapes. And so, <laughs> it just makes sense that he would make some bargain knives. Absolutely, like that. And look, look at the blade is oh, yeah. cool. It's it's SG2. Yeah. And sharp and actually pretty Ooh. thin. It is yeah. not like um, nice and thick on the spine though. Exactly, it doesn't feel exactly, delicate. Exactly. Yeah. But the the just behind it is really nice and thin. Yeah. The material on the handle, I think it's a G10. Yeah, it's got a nice grippy texture to it. It's tough. Nice liner lock too, so you can do that one-handed close, which I really like. With a bit of practice too, you can definitely get used to opening it one-handed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just. Like if you ever heard the term tactical, that's that's how I would describe this. It's such a cool looking knife. Yeah, you wouldn't think it with his kitchen knives being so such thin lasers most of the mm. time, but he my the hunting knife from him I have is tough and robust and it's made from hard steel, but mm. it can take a beating because he just knows what he's doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Number three. Sakai Takayuki Sampo Gyuto. 210 millimeters. Mm. And it's Sakai style, so it's measured from the handle as opposed to the heel there. Yeah. Yeah. So the um, this particular knife is actually new, new knife. Mm. Uh, for I've never those seen this before well. until until now, basically. Yeah. The um, so what happens is that the uh, Sakai, you know, you know what the Sakai is. I mm. briefly talked about them. The there's blacksmith, there's sharpener, there's the wholesalers, mm -hmm. and wholesalers basically gets the blade from the blacksmith and pass it down to sharpeners to sharpen them. Right, they're um, like the producer kind of. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what's happening in the Sakai, it, it is is that the uh, there is great shortage of both blacksmith mm -hmm. and sharpeners. Oh, really? So it's more blacksmith shortage than the sharpener shortage. Oh, that's so, a problem. Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So what the Sakai Takayuki did is that the uh, they have to they know that they have to train those younger blacksmiths, you know, right. faster. Yeah, they've got the same problem that like Masakage had a few mm -hmm. years ago where it's like, well, there's these people, but they just aren't at the level yet. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so Sakai Takayuki owns a factory mm -hmm. in the region or the area called Sampo. Okay. That's why it's called Sampo. Oh, hence the name, yeah. Sampo okay. Factory. Um, then what happens is that the uh, these knives are made entirely by those apprenticeship level. Mm. 
Right. It's not the right people who are good, but they're not like exactly producing on their own in their own workshop. Yeah. Yet. For example, yeah. the Shibata san, the blacksmith is a Shibata san. Right. It's, a, it's not. The, not talking. Not, 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 not the Shibata san. He didn't quit his fire. job to make it. No, no, no. Yeah, forge knives. But the yeah. young young blacksmith called Shibata san who is working under or who is working for Itsuo mm. Doi san. Mm. Right. Cool. So he saw. He sees how the Doi-san works, and he does a lot of work himself as well. Mm -hmm. So basically, what the Sakai Takayuki decided to do is that, hey, Shibata-san, we'll give you a job a little bit. Mm. You know, forge these blades, come up with the design and stuff. Oh, cool! And so they they did. It is a work that's been put out by those younger, up and coming blacksmith mm -hmm. knife makers in that region. It's so important to to support the next generation. Mm -hmm. Like that's something we try to do with Garage Sale, with Small Makers Month, and whenever we can, really, is is get knives from new makers so that they have, you know, not just the source of revenue, but that's part of it. Mm -hmm. But they just have that like encouragement, that momentum to keep going, keep improving. Because the more knives they make, the better they're going to get at it, mm -hmm. and and eventually they'll they'll just you know they'll just get better and better and better. Absolutely, but quality. There's no compromise on yeah. quality. Yeah, no, they're right? fantastic. Yeah. So it reminds me of the one of the first batches from the uh, Doisan, the double bevel. Oh yeah, Doisan yeah. Doisan is and has been a, a blacksmith to make the single bevel, right? Which is usually thicker, way right? thicker, way heavier. And now, now he makes it really thin. But mm -hmm. kind of reminds me of like early years of Doisan mm. making the double bevel. It's like a little bit thick, yeah, and still like nice tapers it down. Yeah, here. it's got a nice taper to it. But the uh, sharpening job is also done by the younger. Uh, Apprentices oh, or cool. the sharpeners in that uh, sample factory. Yeah, yeah. Super thin behind the edge. Nice. So this is gonna be really nice, robust. Um, even thicker spine, like probably maybe like three to three point some millimeter thick at mm -hmm. the at the heel. It will glide through the food very nicely. Mm -hmm. I, it, yeah, and if you want to, uh, you know, people ask for workhorse knives sometimes because they're working in the kitchen or. I'm pretty heavy handed and sometimes the edge of my hado is a little thin for what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Something like that's great. Absolutely, nice and robust. Right? And you know, quality controlled by Sekai Takayuki, mm. one, of the, uh, one of the bigger um, wholesalers, mm. one of the bigger brand in that region, ensures the quality that the blade coming out from that the place too. Mm -hmm. right? So it, it is it's great. The um, blade itself is fantastic, but again, you know, story behind it and the future, what, what this entails and what brings is going to be uh, amazing yeah i'm so i'm so looking forward to uh, to seeing what else they make number two this is my personal favorite of the bunch this is the nigara hamono uh, vg10 damascus it's a new line uh, new to us and uh, just came out this year right and so I just want to talk about this line in general, but this 240 Kiritsuka Gyuto is my personal favorite. Like, just look at this thing, it's awesome. We, Mike and I, went to visit Nigara-san last year mm. in April 2022. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's when they are developing this knife. Oh, cool, so they were just starting to work on it. Exactly, they were like nice. showing us the, uh, hey, we're actually thinking of bringing some mm. EG-10 knives. That was the thing you, you couldn't tell people about, yeah. yeah. What do you think about this? Cool. And it was really, really nice. Uh, but it took them a little bit, you know, yeah. put in the production because yeah, yeah, they yeah. had a lot of back orders on the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, what I like about Nigara-san, the, uh, the blacksmith school Yoshizawa-san, and also as that whole team, is that the uh, they produce like such beautiful knives, a functional beauty as mm -hmm. well. He always, always push himself into doing a lot of different challenges. Yeah. So like we've seen Honyaki coming out from him. <laughs> yeah. We've seen like, you know, Some crazy Damascus yeah, stuff. Crazy yeah. Damascus. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. And the design of which is fantastic. I don't know if you remember the seeing Tsushima that. The is gorgeous. Yeah. The, the Damascus, like I'm not a huge Damascus guy and I really like it. I like it especially that it's on the primary bevel. So if you're resharpening it yourself, mm -hmm. it's you're not gonna mess it up. Like you can just polish that back up to a nice like kind of Migaki or, or Kasumi finish. It's Absolutely. gonna look great. Um, I like I got a lot of love for VG10. I got a lot of time for this steel because it's it's hard enough but not too hard. You know, it's like mm -hmm. the Goldilocks steel. Yeah. And for, for home cooks and professionals, I think it's the perfect kind of like balance. And yeah. they're they're aligned. Like whole line is great. The, mm -hmm. uh, like I remember seeing that the uh, Nakiri. Yeah. Oh, with a little bit of reverse yeah, tip exactly, to it. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, they really, Nigara Hamona really knows how to make cool, badass mm -hmm. knives. And uh, and I, I'm so sold on these. I think this 240 is gonna, gonna end up coming home. It's got just enough weight. It's not too heavy, mm -hmm. not too light. Again, kind of that Goldilocks zone. And uh, even for a bigger knife, and but yeah, like you said, the whole line's beautiful. And the whole line's quite reasonably priced for what you're getting, mm -hmm. both in terms of function and looks. Yeah. Um, and fit and finish too. Stunning handles, uh, really nice and smooth in here. Mm -hmm. So really comfortable to hold. Oh, phenomenal. Absolutely. Yeah. Number one. Well, Nakagawa, Myojin, Aoichi, Damascus, Sekimaru, Sujihiki, 330 millimeters. God damn. That's a mouthful, but I mean, this is a lot of knife. And it's it's a very it's, it's, very beautiful it's, knife. So it's a stunner. It, it's worth it. Yeah. Oh my god! Look at that. The blade itself is made by well forged by Satoshi Nakagawa-san. Mm. He is probably one of the best blacksmiths in both single bevels, double bevels yeah. in that particular region of yeah. Sakai and Honyaki. And Honyaki. Yeah, he's a triple threat. Absolutely. Yeah. He forges the VG10. He even does some of the R2. He does the, uh, you know, all the carbon steels, Aogami, Shirogami, yeah. whatever. And it's it's easier to list the stuff that he doesn't make. Absolutely. Which is not much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's he's a crazy talented blacksmith. You guys got to go go visit him again in that, yeah. that trip in 2022. He's so fast. Yeah. He's like so precise. He definitely knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, but the um, not only that, like, he makes the really beautiful damask, the patterning that he creates mm -hmm. is very, it's, his signature, but yeah. also it's, it's distinct for sure. You don't as, miss it. As we've been talking about the Sakai um, mm -hmm. blacksmithing and knife making, yeah. blacksmith and sharpeners are different, and they they don't li like you know they don't really talk to each other. Yeah. But a lot of sharpeners in Sakai are fantastic. It's mm -hmm. great. Like most of them are great, but there are a few you know I would consider to be the top top like yeah. in terms of skills and philosophy. You know that the black mm. sharpener has to. It's not just the technical skill. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's it's the reasoning behind what you're doing. Exactly. And, yeah. So this one here is sharpened by Naohito Miojin san in Tosa. Yeah. He is so he's got a skill, of course. Yeah. But does he? he is uncompromising in any way. Say for mm. example, the finish that he puts on mm -hmm. is the finish that he believes that does the best job. Mm. Right? Yeah. Sometimes what can happen in that, that region is that the he, the sharpener only sharpens to the point that's been paid for. Polishing yeah. of the spine. Yeah, they, is they extra. make they make it good enough. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They they, they, they the do functional. exactly what they've been told to and nothing else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But instead he does the job and tell them how much it's gonna do it's gonna mm, cost. Nice. So it's it's I like that. it's all so he, he's dictating the terms here, exactly. which is that's the kind of person that sets trends and changes things is, is the person that's like, no, this is the way we're going to do it exactly. because this, I know this is better. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's basically how oh, he that's does awesome. it, right? Yeah. So the, um, he's, he's a real Steve Jobs of knife sharpening. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, like so he, you probably wouldn't see any knives out of the Miljin a uh, name that doesn't have any polished spine. Yeah. N like polished. Because it's just shoulder. better. Exactly. We're seeing more and more knives like this lately because it is just better. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? Super nice clean look, super thin behind you. Yeah, the oh, it's so consistent. Um, there's no like minor scratches or anything. Um, it's like perfect, almost like perfectionist, right? Yeah, it's about as close to perfect as you can get. Blacksmith brings that the potential of steel, right? Mm. Like you know, heat, through the heat treatment and how he forged. Yeah. And sharpeners will bring that even better. Yeah, they bring the potential of forging. They go, yeah. okay, well, here's a great piece of steel that is functionally useless at this point. Yeah. I'm going to turn it into the best possible knife exactly. it can be. Exactly. And yeah. that, that's what the, yeah. the Myojin san is very, yeah. very good he at. He's making it the best possible knife yeah. it can so be. So it's, it's yeah. the best of both worlds. Like the blacksmith, one of the best blacksmiths in the Sakai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brings the potential yeah. of the, uh, the steel up to this yeah and yeah so it's a real dynamic duo yeah, yeah. again pretty pretty young guys who are yeah. just killing it yeah um and nakagawa-san i think is going to very quickly get that like household name kind of status in the knife world like yeah. become very recognized and very popular because they're both such phenomenal makers well, thanks for tuning in, folks. Um, it's been a it's been a phenomenal year for us. We've had some really cool videos come out on the channel. Um, we, I, 
I, I, like 400,000 people watched my sharpening video from January, which is like, thank you, that's amazing. Um, Sky, who's holding the camera, made a great bunch of great videos. One about uh, knife patinas, which was like people loved and we're gonna make part two next year. Now until you've had some great videos on like in-depth sharpening techniques. Right. And we, we really, I think, did some great sharpening live streams. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to do some, some more of those in 2024. Yeah. We're excited for 2024. We got a lot of cool videos planned in the works. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Have a good rest of your year. See you in 2024. Yeah.